Human Rights House Foundation and other international civil society organizations urge the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, PACE, to take decisive action in response to the ongoing repression in Azerbaijan. It is noted that ahead of its January 2025 vote on the renewal of Azerbaijan's credentials, the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe should develop and enforce clear criteria that Azerbaijan should meet before its delegation can be readmitted to the Assembly. Since PACE's decision in January 2024 not to ratify the credentials of Azerbaijan's parliamentary delegation, the Azerbaijani government has only intensified its relentless crackdown on human rights defenders, lawyers, independent journalists, opposition politicians, civil society activists and academics. While Azerbaijan has a long-standing and well-documented record of repressing critical voices, over the last year, the authorities have accelerated their crackdown, targeting the remaining vestiges of independent civil society and media with baseless but serious criminal charges. Dozens of activists and media figures have been arrested, most on charges of smuggling, fraud, counterfeiting currency or drugs possession. Torture and ill-treatment remain widespread and many of the detainees have complained of ill-treatment in police custody. The crackdown together with the highly restrictive legal environment for the operations of independent civil society organizations and media threaten to eradicate all forms of dissent and legitimate human rights work. Given these developments, it is urgent for PACE members to continue to address the deteriorating human rights situation in Azerbaijan and demand that Azerbaijan complies with its statutory and human rights obligations as clear benchmarks before any restoration of the Azerbaijani parliamentary delegation's credentials in 2025. In light of the ongoing repression in Azerbaijan and the serious concerns raised by various Council of Europe bodies, we call upon the PACE to, during the urgent procedure debate at the fourth part of its 2024 session, demand the immediate and unconditional release of all wrongfully imprisoned individuals, seek the full restoration of their civil and political rights, and an end to the persecution of critical voices in Azerbaijan. Call on the Secretary-General of the Council of Europe to open an official inquiry into Azerbaijan's implementation of the European Convention on Human Rights under Article 52 and insist on the Azerbaijani government's full cooperation in the process. Enable PACE oversight of the Council of Europe's renewal of its action plan with Azerbaijan to ensure that any cooperation, including funding, is guided by measurable improvements in human rights and democratic practices and in particular addresses the issues concerning civil society identified by the ECTHR. Any such cooperation should include civil society and human rights defenders. Russian journalist, political commentator Ivan Yakovina reported who is the guarantor of Putin's security today. In case some conspiracy arises among the local Russian elites, there are always these visiting Chechens who could protect Putin. At least the idea was that they are not connected to any clans inside Russia. They are like an external party. So they have one benefactor, one Tsar, Putin, whom they will protect with all their might. Ivan Yakovina spoke about this in one of his videos on the YouTube channel. The journalist shared his thoughts on the situation in the Kremlin. For the fact that they perform this function, these people, the Kadyrovites in Moscow, were allowed to do practically everything. That is, they could commit any criminal offenses and nothing ever happened to them for it. For example, they killed Nemtsov. They killed many others. They shot at each other several times, squeezed out entire banks and corporations. If Kadyrov senses Putin's weakness and orders his fighters to simply return to Chechnya, then this will immediately become an invitation to start a military coup in Moscow because any potential conspirators even in Moscow are now very afraid that they will have to fight against Kadyrov's army, which sits right opposite the Kremlin, if the conspirators try to overthrow Putin. 
They are afraid of Kadyrov's thugs. Again, this is another point of Putin's weakness and the place where Kadyrov holds Putin. The political observer explained. Yakovina also said that the Kremlin is in no hurry to announce mobilization because it is a threat to Putin's regime, which could be overthrown by dissatisfied masses. That is why Putin, as much as possible, postpones making such a decision, although he really needs manpower to make up for losses in Ukraine. You see, he found himself in a not very good situation for him. Putin, as they say, is not to be envied here, the journalist noted. Ivan Yakovina reported this on his YouTube channel. The political observer described the possible scenario for the future. He suggested that the occupiers would be able to slowly advance further, continuing the offensive they began this year and capturing new territories. In this way, the Russian dictator would get what he wants, namely new territories, but by that time, his army would be exhausted and without reserves. Ukraine's incursion into Russia's Kursk Oblast has rattled Russia's elite, but Russian President Vladimir Putin still has a tight grip on the country, said recently CIA Director William Burns. Burns said that the incursion launched on August the 6th was a significant tactical achievement, boosting morale in Ukraine, as well as unveiling Russia's weakness. Notably, it has raised difficult questions for Russia's rich and powerful about where this is all headed, he said.